Good afternoon. My name is Sandra Freitas and I will be, will be facilitating this afternoon's webinar on Pivot to Your Business Strategy in response to COVID-19. Today's webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on our website for public viewing. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our business owner space partners. U.S. Small Business Administration, Downtown Willow Glen Business District, Latino Business Council of Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley Black Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Valley Organization, Small Business Development Center, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Valley, Small Business Minority, Winchester Business Association, San Jose Public Library Works, and eBay. Today's agenda will provide a quick orientation, a presentation by three guest speakers, how we'll be addressing questions and answers, and provide you with resources, contact information, and share information on our next webinar. During the um, question and answer sessions, um, and during the, um, during the webinar, we ask all participants to be placed on mute for the entirety of the presentation. And at the end, folks will be invited to speak during the Q&A session, which will be addressed after each presentation. Please use the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen to scribe topic-related questions that pertain to today's presentation. If you have any questions pertaining to loans or any other topic that does not pertain to pivoting your business strategy, please email or visit our website for resources at sjeconomy.com backslash COVID-19 business info. If you have any other questions, once again, related to different topics not presented today, we ask you to email us. Vietnamese and Spanish reading staff are, are available via email, so feel free to ask questions in those language if it is more comfortable for you. The speaker will answer selected questions in English, after which the answer will be repeated in the language in which it was asked. In the event you need to leave during the webinar while it's in session, please email your question and someone from our staff will get back to you. Our email address is listed here and on the resources slide. Today's presenters will address questions that pertain to their presentations. About our speakers. Today, I would like to introduce to you um, our first speaker, Pamela C. Favre and Paul Barsley. Pamela is the vice chair for SCORE Silicon Valley, and Paul is a the mentor for SCORE Silicon Valley. Our second speaker, Shana Brown, is the state government relations for eBay. Our third speaker, Frank Nguyen, is the owner of Academic Coffee. Now I would like to ask Frank Nguyen to share his screen. Hi all, this is Frank here. Um, uh, I've got a screenshot up, but um, you know, before I, I start kind of walking through things that I did, um, you know, as a small business owner, 
I know how, how challenging it can be because, you know, you, you spent years working on your business and all of a sudden overnight, you know, everything comes crashing down. And, uh, you know, a lot of the feelings that I've had were, you know, shock, disappointment, fear, anger, depression, and, and all of those feelings are, are completely valid feelings. And uh, luckily, luckily I had the support of my wife to, to say, hey, you know, let's, uh, let's figure it out. Let's think about what to do next and let's get creative. Um, so, you know, Academic Coffee is a coffee shop. That, that's all we do. We just, uh, we just sell coffee and pastries. So now that people can't go out, they don't go out as often, they're only going out for essentials. Um, you know, the first thing I, I thought about was, you know, what do I do next? And thankfully at this time, um, you know, a lot of resources are out there that, that want to help. So a lot of business platforms are making features available or uh, providing free services. So I'll, I'll just go through a few things that, that I've done. So a quick example is this screenshot of my Instagram page. Um, they have a feature where you can add uh, gift cards and that's just right in the center, right below the, the profile. And that, that feature is free. So you could link your uh, gift card platform. So most small businesses, they might be using a payment processor like Revel or Square or Shopify. Um, you, can, you can just link your Instagram right to those gift cards. And that's a great way to get support from uh, your customer base right now. And I believe Instagram is making that feature free until uh, the end of the year. Uh, the other thing, um, the other thing that's available right now too is uh, Square has made their uh, online shopping store free and available. Okay, I'm going to share that as well. But uh, you know, for for me, I was trying to figure out, you know, what what can we do besides sell coffee and pastries? And you know, I think the most important thing to do is is uh, know your customer and, and understand them and, and figure out what their needs are. So I, I talk to you know, my customers every single day and they were telling me that, you know, about their trips to the grocery store and how difficult it was to get things. And so we started procuring items that they might need. And I'll show an example of how I was able to ask these questions. And I, and I still ask these questions every single day. Um, I'm at the shop every day and I and, you know, ask people, hey, what are you looking for? What do you need? How, how can we help? How can we be convenient for you? Um, I'm gonna go into our Instagram stories just to show an example. So a quick example here is uh, I've asked a question to our, our customer base. Um, hey, we're, we're bringing in produce from our suppliers. Um, the restaurant industry's been hit pretty hard right now. And uh, these suppliers who normally would like sell produce to really nice restaurants um, have made it available to us. And so this is on Instagram. You can ask a question. Um, it doesn't cost anything to do. And uh, I'm literally asking people, what do you want to see? We've been bottling a lot of drinks uh, to make it easier for to go. Um, people aren't coming out as often because, you know, they shouldn't be. So we're selling, you know, six packs of coffee, jugs of coffee, big containers of coffee. And I'll ask our audience questions like, hey, if we bottled this, would you be interested? Yes or no? And that helps us figure out, you know, products to make things, you know, we're, we're trying to come up with new products now, new business models now. And um, it's, it's so difficult to try and go out and advertise and get new customers, the best thing to do is figure out what your customers want. Um, so that's an example there. So this is our brand new website. Uh, we set up academicpantry.com right here. And uh, I built this website in, in two days and I am not a programmer. I, I don't have a programming background. This was uh, built off of the Square platform. Um, uh, Square is really popular with small businesses. There are other platforms out there too, like um, Squarespace, Shopify, that will make it uh, really easy to set up an online store. 
Um, I use Square because it was free because we're already a customer. So if you're already a Square customer, this is, this is totally free to do. Um, it'll sync with your current menu and products. And uh, you can customize it. And uh, what I've done is turned ourselves into a little pantry. So you know, in addition to, to selling the drinks that we would normally sell and the pastries that we would normally sell, now we've completely changed our menu. So now we're offering all these bottled drinks and jugs and growlers. And this is something that we didn't do before, but when you think about your customer and they're not coming out as often, what can you do to make it more convenient for people that should only be going out once a week, if at all? And so these were ideas that we came up with. And you know, outside of coffee, I've seen other businesses do something really similar. So uh, people aren't eating out as much, obviously. And I've seen uh, restaurants do family meals, which is really creative. Um, and uh, you know, a really good example is uh, you know the table in Wool Glen. I've seen them do that as well, where they're packing packaging together family meals. It gets people to 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 do a big purchase versus a bunch of small purchases. Um, so an example is that you know before we were just selling like drinks for like three or four dollars. Now we're selling a week's worth of coffee at a time, so you're getting your you know average ticket price up. And I think uh, you know those are kind of the ideas that you want to do, where if you're only going to see a person once a week, what can you do for them? And then we started getting really creative by talking to our suppliers and saying, hey, what else can we get that's you know shelf stable, um, pantry items, uh, house supplies, things for people so that they don't have to wait in line at the grocery store. And what we've done with the Square site is that uh, you can actually place an order and then set it for a pickup time. So we could be you know, tomorrow at 7.45 or any other time. And that makes it really convenient. So now people are doing their grocery shopping with us. We've got homemade jams, granola. Um, you know, here we have an item that is totally off brand that we normally wouldn't carry. It's Spam. And we put it in here because we were asking our customers what they wanted to see. And one person said, hey, I haven't had, a, I haven't had spam in like months and it's sold out everywhere. If you had it, I'd just buy it for fun. So we put it in here. Um, and a lot of people are baking at home now because uh, that's like the trend because you're locked inside, you're gonna start baking. So we start procuring butter, flour. Um, our surprising top seller was was yeast. We've restocked it and it's sold out so many times. Um, and so it's just a matter of trying to figure out what, what people need and what, what can you do. And of course, we're still selling coffee. Um, we're not selling it by the cup as much anymore. So we're selling it more by the bag. Uh, and the next thing that we're about to do is you know, release educational videos so that people can you know, figure out how to, how to brew their coffee at home. Um, and in addition to that, we started doing cleaning supplies because obviously people want gloves, toilet paper, and bleach. Um, but those are, those are just some ideas. I, I think, you know, I think with, um, you know, how difficult it is to get just everyday items right now, I, I, I think uh, any, any food service business can, can quickly offer their uh, commercial supplies to their customers. Um, cause we're just one location and ideally people don't travel that far to, to get what they need. Um, you know, I would encourage other businesses to, if you have these supplies to offer it to your customers, because, you know, chances are, you know, one, you know, your customers want to support you because there's already so few small businesses in San Jose, it would be a shame for anyone to close. And at the same time, it would be convenient for them. Um, So that's, that's, that's how we turned from a coffee shop to a grocery slash convenience store. Um, and all of these things that we did didn't, didn't necessarily cost us anything. Um, you know, they, they were platforms that were already available to us. And you know, even if you had to pay for a service like Squarespace or Shopify, I think the fees are you know, 20 or $30 a month. Um, 
they're not too expensive. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just leave with the fact that, you know, the best thing to do is to, to understand your customer, talk to them, see what they need and, and how can you make things more convenient for them. And, and as a small business, I know that the community wants to support you. So it's just about understanding them and, and figuring out what you, can, what you can do for them as well. And with that, I am going to uh, stop my screen share and I'll stick around. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And if I have to sign off because I have a baby with me, then um, I'll be happy to, to follow up by email as well. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pam Vavra, and I, as uh, Sandra indicated, I serve on the board for SCORE Silicon Valley. And today I'm going to uh, work with Paul Barsley, who's also our membership uh, coordinator at SCORE, to present to you um, the following. I'm going to first give a brief introduction, my relevant background, then I'm going to talk some about uh, a, a slide that I put together called My Pivot Points. Then Paul's going to introduce himself and talk about uh, the work that he's done in um, working with design thinking. And that's something that we, we all use a lot at SCORE. So, and then we're going to follow up with how SCORE might be able to assist you. I want to start by saying that I'm very humbled by the fact that and aware of the fact that I, I'm sitting in tremendous privilege right now in the sense that I work part-time as an attorney and part-time at Santa Clara University. And with the exception of you know, the, the courts being closed and some litigation matters being put on hold for me, I am not suffering economically. So I want to acknowledge that um, and, and be clear about the fact that unlike people like Frank, I'm not coming from a place of having to switch my livelihood in the face of, of severe crisis. My background is I, I worked for 20 years as a software engineer in applied research uh, for aerospace, defense, and energy, doing real-time imaging and artificial intelligence. Some of the, the crises that occurred in my life and in my work life so, uh, were usually around frequent layoffs. Wherever the contract went, people got laid off and, and uh, had to go to another company. But those were, were pretty easy to handle. Uh, in 1991, however, there were mass, mass layoffs. And I was working at Hughes Aircraft at the time. And that's how I first became introduced to SCORE because Hughes worked together with SCORE to put together a 10 week program to teach engineers how to become entrepreneurs. Um, later, I had a number of medical events. In fact, I became disabled for a substantial amount of time. Um, and that was very devastating to me. I completely lost my career uh, right when I was um, in, in a rather, upward trend, shall we say. I had been publishing in prestigious uh, technical journals and headhunters were after me. Um, so it was quite devastating. And uh, I ended up gradually getting back on my feet by working with nonprofits, doing organic farming, which my husband and I did for a number of years. Um, and then finally, um, I became more healthy and I was able to re- position my entire life by going to law school. I then developed a solo practice and now I work for a small law firm, but I also work at Santa Clara University. So um, just with that background, I put together what I've called Pam's Pivot Points and I actually created this because I work at the Bronco Venture Accelerator at Santa Clara University and we were talking with our 
um, 30 startups that we work with there. And I think the first thing I want to say is, you know, even though the kinds of um, business starts and stops and transitions that I've experienced might not really mimic what small businesses are going through right now, um, life is but a series of pivots. So I say get used to it. But it's really important to systemize your response. And the reason for that is that we don't think clearly when we're in crisis mode. And so it's really important to develop as a habit, how are you gonna to respond to certain crises? And one thing that I highly recommend is for a company, for, and this is what I teach people at SCORE, uh, is to do a continuous SWOT analysis. SWOT, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, stands for looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, and then the external opportunities and threats that may exist outside. It's really important to always communicate. As uh, Frank pointed out, communicating with your customers, your clients, a always ask for help. There's a classic example that we talk about in school, Ben and Jerry's, that were, they were about to go out of business. And because they couldn't pay their, their rent, they couldn't pay back their loans. And uh, they, they went to SCORE and asked for help. And SCORE counselors asked them, well, have you talked with the bank? And they actually hadn't. So SCORE helped them uh, develop a rapport with the bank and uh, negotiate uh, their way out of it. It's really important also to really seek diversity of thought. It's important to avoid groupthink uh, because you need to be able to think outside the box and come up with creative solutions. All the while, it's really important to focus on your why, or at least that's what was important to me. Um, it, and if others will tell you that too. Keep in mind, why, why is it you're doing what you're doing? Follow that passion. And then I think you'll find that you don't have to fear. You can have confidence that it's, it really is only gonna be temporary. You will pull out of this. But we at SCORE are finding ourselves talking some people off the ledge uh, because they, it's hard to see that when you're in a crisis and all you can see, all you can worry about is how you're gonna get your next paycheck or how you're gonna put food on the table. It's, it's hard to realize it, but it's important to remember that you will pull through this. And then finally, I tell people uh, about how trauma surgeons deal in the field. They talk about it being important to be able to articulate what's going on, concretely articulate things, because that's how you get out of your lizard brain, so to speak, and get into that frontal cortex to be able to really do some analysis work. And the next is it's important to think about, or actually uh, not think, but then feel. How does it make you feel? And get into those feelings. And then think about when you have felt that way similarly, and when you've been in a similar feeling state, what resources were you able to find to help pull you out of it at that time? So those are just some techniques that I have learned over the years to help me through my periods of transition. And uh, I, I hope maybe that might be a little bit useful for you. Thank you. And I think Paul will go into a little bit more. Thank you, Pam, and uh, welcome and, and hello. Um, so I've been a SCORE mentor for more than eight years. I got laid off in the last financial crisis, uh, and my wife as well. So we ended up consulting for a while, but then decided we were going to stop and uh, see what we could do to try and help other people. So, um, and I've enjoyed it and continue to enjoy doing mentoring uh, with my clients. As you can probably tell, I'm not from around these parts. Uh, but however, I grew up in England, um, educated as an engineer. Uh, but most of my work in life has been out of England, 35, 36 years here in the States, a few, several years in Canada, and a few years in South Africa. So I kind of traveled around a bit and lived in a few different places. Um, I've done startups, I've done consulting work, I've done uh, corporate in America, I've been COOs, CFOs, uh, um, engineers, product designers, VP of engineering, so I've had a lot of different titles in my life 
but the one I enjoy the most is the mentor title that I have right now. So one of the things that I did in my life for 15 years, I worked at a company called IDEO, that's I-D-E-O. And uh, they're a design and engineering company, mostly design now, but when I was with them, we did a lot of engineering as well. And we helped and designed products for other companies. And so I myself am not a designer. I was actually the COO of, of IDEO. But, you know, by hanging around with all these designers for 15 years, I kind of uh, learned a little bit about what it means to, uh, to, to be a designer through osmosis. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, but before I start, if I can now get this to move. There we go. Um, I want to thank uh, Frank um, for his, uh, his piece, his introduction in piece, because clearly Frank is already using design thinking in the way that he's uh, pivoted his company and, and gone out off and asked customers to find out what they really want and come up with, and come up with solutions. And in a way, what Frank has been doing, that's what design thinking is all about. Um, it's, it's to help you pivot right now, whatever your business is, and try and think through what can you do to resolve some of the problems you're facing. So uh, it's been around a long time. This is not something new. It's probably been around 30 or 40 years. Um, it was caught, taught very much in design schools for, for the first 20 of those years. But in the last couple of decades, it's, it's moved out from the design field into being, a, and it is applied across a wide variety of, uh, of thinking. It's a process. And the process is, uh, sort of starts with this sort of creative problem solving. Um, it's, a, it's all about asking the right questions and taking actions. And you saw that with Frank's uh, presentation. And it encourages businesses and startups to focus on the people they are creating for, for which leads to better services or products. It's an interactive process. It's not, you know, you don't go through these steps in one, in one go, one after the other. You're going to return back and we look at them and, uh, and try again in this iterative process. Um, so the first sort of stage is about empathy, observation, interviewing. What does that mean? Well, it means asking questions, just like Frank was asking his, his customers, what do they want? And then finding solutions to their, to their um, needs. It's about that, it's about building empathy with your customer base and looking for potential uh, solutions that, uh, that come from that. Observations is about um, looking to see what are your customers doing? Uh, are they uh, are they going to grocery stores as an example or are they going doing things online what can you do to help improve their situation so observations is something that's uh, used very it's extensively in the design world and I'll talk a bit more about that as an example later on um, what else do I want to say here uh, one of the things about uh, empathy and observations and interviewing that we used to talk about at IDEO is at dumb. You don't want to come across as an expert. You don't want, in fact, that's the worst thing you can be because it closes your mind. You want to have an open mind. So you want to act dumb. You want to, uh, you want to be like your five-year-old child that asks these questions and you wonder, wow, where did they come from? Because you know, he's seeing things for the first time and you've got to try and see things for the first time as well when you're doing some of that observations and interviewing. The next stage in this is define. From those insights that you've, you know, by going out and talking to people and observing, you need to put those together in your, in your notes, maybe the video sections, sessions that you did, you need to put it all together and look for commonalities so that you can then sort of see, well, okay, what are the real issues and what are the real needs of the customer? And when you've got that sort of sorted out, you can then move into the next stage, which is the ideation stage. Ideation is just a fancy word for, for coming up with ideas. So this is a brainstorming approach. And one of the things we recommend is to have cross-functional teams. So what does that mean? Well, in the idea sense, it meant to have people that were designers and human factor specialists and engineers and so on. But in your business, it could be 
your accountant, it could be the people that um, serve on the, um, on the shop floor, if that's the type of service you have. It could be a couple of your customers. It could, and it could be your, you know, obviously the owner. So you want to try and bring together cross-functional teams because they come along with different, a different viewpoint than you. And one of the most important things is to avoid the, let me be the devil's advocate. Um, this is where someone says, you know, try, it's, it's really basically um, showing all the negative things that could be wrong with the particular idea, there's ideas that you've come up with. When, we, when I was at IDEO, one of the things we had, we had all about um, making sure that uh, you didn't criticize anyone's um, brainstorm idea. We just, we just registered it on a, on a, on a board. Um, you build upon others' ideas, and not until you've got all the ideas out do you look to see, okay, what might be reasonable solutions to some of the problems you're trying to solve. And we like to come up with at least three solutions for every type of issue. Because we want to go into the next stage, which is the prototype and test. We want to take some of these solutions, prototype them in some way, whatever that might mean, might mean like in Frank's case, he goes out and buys a couple of the uh, of the, uh, the the yeast packets or the spam packets that he had, and he puts up on his website and does he, and he sees does it sell? No, it didn't sell. Okay, I'm not going to keep that up there any longer. He'll move on to the next thing. So prototyping is about whatever it might be in your case. Come working on it, something that's rapid allows you to test it, find out if that solution works. If it doesn't work you go through and repeat this process or you go back to that next idea that you had that might be something that you could do with your business that you, um, that you haven't done before. So that's kind of a very high level overview of what design thinking is, um, is, is really about. Um, and of course in five minutes, I can't really get into a lot of depth. I will talk to you, uh, if I can get it to work, here it goes. A little bit about a uh, maybe one of the last projects that I was involved in when I was at IDEO, which um, was in 1999, and, and we uh, we did this um, brainstorming um, session for um, uh, actually I think it was for CBS. It was a it was a TV program. We wanted to see how this whole process worked, and so we decided to look at the uh, the, the humble shopping cart. And we went through a number of, uh, you know, a number, a number of observations at our local supermarket, which was just around the corner from us. Um, we asked many questions of the the people in there shopping, the people uh, in the, in the store stacking the shelves, the people at the uh, checkout counters, um, and to try and come up with, you know, what were the key issues. And you can see there the key issues that we came up with um, were maneuverability, shopping behavior child safety, child safety, maintenance and cost. So then we, you know, we went off and we did our ideation stage and we, and we did some prototyping. We went round and round you know, with some of those prototypes and went back, back and forwards. And we eventually came up with this concept, which you can see there, which we, we then put together. So the first thing was, one of the things we heard about was that cars get stolen all the time. So we wanted to see what we could do to solve that problem. So we made a cart that is basically a frame. And you have to actually put these baskets on the frame. Otherwise, you know, you know, the cart itself is useless. You can't do anything with it. Um, the second thing was the idea of that they nested together. So they take up their space, which you know, most carts do that already. Uh, removable baskets. This makes it easy for you to just remove it, put it on the counter so that you can easily uh, um, you know, the checker can easily take them out of the out of the cart, out of the basket rather, and uh, and um, pay and get you to pay for them. We had a number of people saying that they you know they had two children, so a dual child seat was one of the things that we came up. And the last one was um, maneuverability, and we came up with the idea of steering wheels at the back as well, so that you could actually maneuver it much more easier pretty important in some of the smaller supermarkets that you get in Europe, for instance. Um, so that's just an example of what does it mean to be, you know, to do this ideation uh, and to do design thinking and, um, and, a, and an example of how that looks. So next I'm going to go into the score. 
So school's been around for more than 50 years. Um, you can see here our mission is to, is to really help small businesses. And um, it's the thing that I enjoy the most. Um, I love the idea that um, I'm helping people get off their business, you know, get their business going, or work with them to help them grow their business. And, uh, and um, it's, it's just been a, a wonderful um, opportunity for me. We provide free business advice and mentoring. We offer um, low or no cost uh, business training and, and we, uh, we share business uh, templates and resources. And you can find in all of those on the SCORE website or our, score, our website, SiliconValleyScore.org. So how can uh, SCORE help you? Um, well, we, uh, we review your business ideas or your business in a confidential way. Uh, we explain how to apply for licenses, purchase agreements, uh, uh, leaseholds and things like this, general things that you need to know to just be able to run and start your business. Um, we provide some form of uh, uh, how to find legal advice and Pam actually runs a legal clinic which uh, is uh, free to, uh, um, to um, SCORE members. Um, we help create a detailed business plans. I teach the business plan class at, uh, at our local chapter. Um, we advise business on negotiations, how to, how to negotiate, and, and we coach you through you know, financial preparations, doing your pitch deck, how to, uh, how to look for angel investors, those types of things. If you're you know, in the growth mode, um, then, you know, then it's more about uh, how do we evaluate your business. We can come in and actually do an evaluation. We can put together a cross-functional team of people that will look at the various aspects of your business and give you some, um, give you a, a, a free review of what you, how your business is working and what you might be able to do next. That through that we identify new markets, maybe new customers, um, access to uh, you know product portfolios. We assist you in SWOT, which is what Pam was talking about earlier on. Uh, growth strategies, putting together some sort of uh, annual business um, plan, annual business budgets, and help you close or transition out of your business if, that, if that's what you need to do. We do have some experts that have worked as uh, business brokers, so they know how to you know, help you sell up your business as well. So at my chapter, we have 65 plus mentors, uh, experience at water and all over the place. We do meet with clients normally. Uh, they're crossed out right now because right now we can only do stuff as um, phone or video. Um, and of course, we uh, we meet with clients at their business when we're when things are not in lockdown, and we do you know phone, video, and email. And our website you can see there. We offer a number of uh, local workshops, various titles, um, and you know, I, I urge you to go to our website and see what we have coming up. We have made many of these now web-based so that you can still do these workshops. Um, some of them are free, some, some of them we ask for a nominal amount for to help us, co help us pay for our costs of uh, leasing our co-working space and some other costs that we have. And, um, and we would like obviously to see you there. So don't wait, contact us. Here's our contact information. And um, after that, unless Pam, do you have anything else to say? I shall stop. I have a couple of things actually. Thank you, Paul. One is I want to clarify that the legal advising clinic score does not provide legal advice um, at all. Uh, but that's why we've partnered with Santa Clara University and the law school pro provides a free legal advising clinic. And it's not just for SCORE members, it's for the, the public at large. Um, uh, Santa Clara University is grateful to, for their partnership with SCORE because SCORE is able to do um, all the outreach or a lot of the outreach needed for that. We also coordinate with other um, partners as well. Many of the boss partners that were listed in the beginning, we work very closely with them. And uh, so that, that's the main thing I wanted to clarify. But thank you, Paul. Do we have questions or should we read them or? Um, I think we're going to questions at the end. As, as I oh, I thought it was at each, if after each um, section. Okay. Got it.
Good afternoon. My name is Shana Brown, and I'm the manager of state government relations for eBay. Um, I want to thank my co-panelists and um, the city for putting this together. I share a lot of the sentiments that have um, been expressed by Pam and Paul and Frank um, about the uncertainty that this is uh, creating for small businesses and the opportunity that perhaps lies ahead for um, you know, businesses to pivot. Uh, I like the idea of pivoting because I think it's very empowering. I think that right now there, um, you know, it's a, a difficult time to navigate. And so um, what we do have control over and what we can move forward with, I think is very important. Um, I am, uh, my, my role really is to help um, provide resources that might be available from state, local, or federal governments and bring them and educate um, our sellers on our site. Um, for those of you that may not know, eBay was born and raised in San Jose. Um, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary this year, and um, we have a long-standing partnership with the city, so we're happy to participate today. Um, I also want to share that I am a Bay Area native and um, I am the daughter of a small business owner. So um, I definitely feel these issues. They're close to home. Um, they impact my dad, who's a sole proprietor for a construction company. Um, and I think, you know, I definitely saw how that played out for him uh, during the 2008-9 Great Recession. So um, I think it's important that we are are thinking about ways to pivot and 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 quickly um, so moving forward I just um, wanted to um, remind everybody that eBay is a purpose-driven company um, we exist to empower people and small businesses and um, specifically we help small businesses with e-commerce on our platform um, my role in the government relations department is to give a voice to small and medium-sized businesses. We do that in a, a variety of different ways. Um, for some of our small businesses, we bring them to the Capitol so that they can tell their stories and so they can share with their local and state legislators um, how, how they have been empowered by e-commerce. E um, but really, we wanna make sure that we get relevant information out quickly to our sellers, um, and in this time, that means information about government loans, um, other types of assistance programs, um, so that we can help our sellers and small businesses weather this storm. Um, for example, eBay is facilitating a series of webinars for our sellers, um, and just this week, we had um, a representative from the Small Business Development a center to provide a walkthrough for some of the government programs that are currently available. Um, but otherwise, we're also partner partnering with entities like the City of San Jose in order to um, promote our resources more broadly. Um, this is an example um, of what we have put together in response to COVID-19. Um, eBay Main Street is one of the platforms that we communicate with our sellers and our small businesses. Um, and the first priority was to develop a clearinghouse for sellers in all 50 states. Um, there are, you know, a gamut of differences between what's happening in California and North Dakota and Florida. And so we're trying to make sure that our sellers from all across the country have the resources that they need. Um, but also we have multiple list resources per state so that um, you're directed perhaps to the economic development agency and so that we can get you plugged in and uh, resourced as quickly as possible. Um, this is constantly being updated, so I would encourage you to check it out um, because there are lots of California resources available there. Um, like Pam, eBay can't provide legal or tax advice to our sellers but we do wanna make sure that we can educate them and direct them to the right information. And our ultimate goal is to ensure that our seller community has the information that they need and um, knows where they go when they have questions. So this is just um, a sample of um, you know, some resources that we've been highlighting. I am um, not gonna go into a lot of detail. I think 
um, we can make sure that we get lots more information about this. Um, you know, I would just highlight that our government relations team is divided into two. We have a federal team who's tracking everything that's coming down at the federal level, which is then passed through to the state. Um, and then we have a state team. I manage um, states in the west of the western part of the country, and I have a counterpart in the east. So we just really want to make sure that this information gets out and it gets out quickly. Um, and then this is just another example of the um, the huge swath of information that's available and how it differs. Um, you know, at least from a state's approach, we have um, 845 executive orders. So um, you know, there's a lot of differences and nuances by states and by counties. Um, but I think what's really important is that um, you know. I want to applaud the leadership of the city of San Jose and the mayor. Um, you know, he was the first to enact some local orders of, of shelter in place. Um, and the California was one of the first states to move with that. And I think that um, everything that we have is pointing to the direction that it's working. Um, but I also know that the mayor and the city are doing what they can to provide the resources um, to the small businesses on the ground, like webinars today. Um, and so, you know, just really proud of the work that the city is doing and proud to be part of the city. Um, in addition, these are some, you know, like I said, we are tracking things on a state and a federal level. Um, but, you know, I think that it's important to note that there are lots of actions that the city has taken um, and, and that is, you know, highlighted all over their website, but one of the things that I, you know, was interested to see was that they have resources for um, the homeless community, um, they have information about the eviction moratorium and grants programs on the Grants Hub. So those are some ideas or some examples of the state and local actions and resources that are available to you through the city. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to talk about what eBay has been doing to support small businesses during this time. We launched a program called Up and Running, and um, this was really a way for us to commit about $100 million to small businesses that are, are exactly where you are, which is saying, what should I be doing? Now, you know, there's not a one, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, E-commerce may not be the right next step for all retail or for all businesses, but um, it is a tool in the toolbox. And, you know, we have been able to commit and waiving fees and um, allowing for businesses to set up their stores for those that are interested in pivoting to an e-commerce model. Um, all in all, um, I'm happy to share any more information um, near that going to help collect questions that might be pertain to eBay um, and I will participate in the Q&A here at the end. Wonderful. Thank you so very much Pamela, Shana, Frank and Paul for sharing. Um, this afternoon, we will take this opportunity to address talk, topic pertinent questions. Please be sure to add your questions to the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen. Once again, we encourage you to send all other COVID-19 questions to our email address, covid19sjbusiness at sanjoseca.gov. Question number one. And the only question we have thus far reads, um, what help ideas are available for retail businesses that do not have an online business? If we can have one of our presenters to address this question. I can say a couple of words to that. Um, one of the things that we do at SCORE um, we have an awful lot of marketing experts that talk about, they don't talk about pivoting, but they talk about creating alternative sales channels, right? And even for, for, for businesses that don't currently have any online sales channel, um, they might be able to help you develop one. 
one example that I saw, um, I, well, I was going to say, you can tell that I haven't seen my hairdresser in a while. Uh, and I saw a hairdresser has developed an online presence uh, selling beauty products and also um, doing online videos to help people style their own hair, cut their own hair, etc. So, um, you know, it's thinking outside the, the box is, is what's really important. And I think the, one of the advantages that SCORE counselors can help bring to the table is our 65 counselors have broad variety of experiences. And so we can really help people get those creative juices going and, and think of alternatives. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Paul, but. No, no, I think you've done a good job, Pam. Wonderful. Thank you so very much, Pam. That actually um, concludes our Q&A session. And um, I would like to turn it over to Mirza, who will be discussing our resources. Thank you. So before you, here is a list of resources. Um, we, um, we would like to ask if you are interested in being a speaker or would like to receive additional information about upcoming events, please contact Mirza at the listed email address to share any potential topics um, you would like to see offered through our webinar um, series. Um, the business laying off or downsizing. If your business is laying off or downsizing, we'd like for you to um, contact the workers adjustment and retaining notification. Warn business service team at work to future at San Jose CA.gov. All employers, businesses, and nonprofit profits and workers impacted by COVID-19 can write us at COVID-19 SJ Business at sanjose.ca.gov or call 1-877-880-1222. Please note if you need any assistance um, with translation in Spanish or Vietnamese or in Chinese, we're happy to assist you. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mirza Hanzar. And I'd like to thank you all for our amazing panelists, Paul, Pam, Shana, and Frank. We're very grateful to see such great showcasing of how others have pitted their business. Um, I, I'd like to just let everybody know that we will be sharing this recording, as Sandra mentioned. Uh, but also, we would love to hear feedback about potential future topics you would all like to see in the near future. Um, I will be sending a survey out to everybody, uh, along with the link of the webinar and copies of the PowerPoints from the presenters. Uh, our upcoming webinar for next Thursday, April 23rd, uh, will be at the same time, 3 p.m. We're going to have a, a great speaker coming out from Start Small, Think Big. The topic is going to be surrounded around legal essentials of doing business um, online with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, during the unprecedented time, you know, as a result of COVID-19, there's a lot of needs and concerns uh, that have shifted towards local businesses. Uh, and we're really fortunate to see Start Small, Think Big provide additional resources um, that also will be aside from online. There will be some, you know, legal uh, conversations around what you can do around financial information, operational HR, and other challenges stemming from COVID-19. Uh, so there will be a registration link that will be followed up uh, with the webinar along with the PowerPoints, and uh, we really would love to see more feedback from everybody as mentioned, but also uh, see you all at next week's um, presentation. Thank you all so much. And again, if any questions do arise, feel free to email me. Um,
but especially please use the email that was on the PowerPoint, um, COVID-19. Uh, we'll all also be sharing that with everyone uh, with my follow-up email with the survey. Thank you all so much, and I hope everybody has a great day.